Facepalm America. I'm Beowulf Rockland. FacepalmAmerica.com is where you can get more information about the show, listen to past episodes, and connect with us on social media. It's Monday, which means that it's time for John Rothman of Around the Political World with John Rothman. John, welcome to Facepalm America. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Beowulf. So, um, it's it's Monday towards the end of October in 2023. Uh, how how long have we been without a Speaker of the House of Representatives at this point? My goodness. This is the 20th day, <laughs> and it is unprecedented, I mean, in, in modern times. But it's astounding. Do people understand, Beowulf, that without a Speaker, nothing happens? The House cannot act? Yeah. It's just crazy. I, I, I think that not enough people understand that, really, because... Uh, a lot of critical things are dependent upon that. A lot of things are dependent upon the functioning of that august body. And in another less than 30 days now, uh, we're going to see the government shut down unless the House does, one, uh, elect a speaker, and two, uh, act upon uh, some form of a continuing budget resolution uh, in one way, shape, or form. And so uh, it's it's more than just the Republicans being a bunch of goofballs. Uh, it, I mean, if they were in a vacuum doing that, that would be one thing, and it, it might even carry a certain amount of uh, pleasurable schadenfreude uh, along with it. But there's, there's too much writing on this for it to be entirely just a, a funny situation. No, it, it's terrible. I, my commentary this morning on Around the Political World with John Rothman has to do with the role of the speaker. But I began with a quote from Barry Goldwater at the 1960 Republican National Convention. And Goldwater, who had been nominated for president, withdrew. And he turned to the convention. He said, grow up, conservatives. The Republican Party is our historic home. And the whole point is the Republicans haven't grown up. Do you know what's shocking to me, Beowulf? I, I can't believe this. There are nine potential candidates for speaker who will speak to the caucus today. Mm-hmm. Seven of the nine are election deniers. Good Lord. They deny that Joe Biden is president of the United States or should be president. It is astounding that the Republican Party would go off the deep end on something like this. And the news this morning is that Donald Trump is mixing in, absolutely opposing those who believe that the election was legitimate. So this is this is the sad state of the Republican Party. And don't forget, please, we got the Middle East erupting. We have Ukraine erupting, and as you so rightly pointed out, we've got a serious problem in our own country with our own money situation. It's very true that you mentioned that uh, President Biden uh, put is in the process of putting before Congress uh, a package for uh, funding for Ukraine, for Israel, and that will not happen either unless the House of Representatives, uh, and specifically the Republican Party, gets its uh, act together. Seven election deniers. So the the likelihood, statistically speaking, is that an election denier will be the the Speaker of the House of of Representatives, which is just absolutely an atrocious thing. And uh, I don't know whether, I I haven't read whether this is still a possibility or not. I know at one point, a number of people were putting Donald Trump forward as a possible Speaker of the House because it is not necessary for a a House Speaker to actually be a member of the House of of Representatives. Have you heard anything more on on that score? Do we have a shadow 10th person running for Speaker? Not a chance of a snowball in hell. I would hope so. Uh, (laughs) I I would hope seven of them wouldn't be election deniers either, but, you know, strange things happen these days. Donald Trump is having such problems this week, and as you know, all the court decisions have gone against him. Uh, He now has two of his key attorneys uh, flipping on him uh, who are going to give testimony. Yes. If I were Donald Trump, I would not be a happy man, but he has to assert control. He has to have a Speaker of the House of Representatives who is somebody who works with him in order to maintain his iron lock on the Republican Party. So it is not just what happens in the House. It's also affecting national Republican politics. You know, it is interesting. I uh, have delved over the years into many different political worlds, and I will say that uh, the news that uh, Kenneth uh, Chesbro and Sidney Powell have both 
flipped on the president is fascinating to me because it was, I believe, for, for several years, between 2016 and 2019, I actually attended CPAC in Washington, D.C., and I had the dubious uh, privilege of being introduced to Sidney Powell. I did not know who she was at the time. I did not uh, have any sense of who she would become, but it is... Uh, <laughs> It's fascinating to me that now she is at, at the in the middle of all of all of this, and and that she uh, could be the fulcrum on which this case turns. Yeah, it's also interesting that Donald Trump is now separating himself from Sidney Powell. Yeah. Oh, he was never my lawyer, he right. says. But in fact, he introduced her mm. as his lawyer for heaven's sake. Uh, it's a tragedy, but you understand we we may joke about it. We may have all these things. But look, what's going on in the world today requires the Republican Party to get its act together. And I am absolutely disgusted by Republicans who accuse the Democrats of conspiring in all of this. There were eight Republicans who, crazy eights as they're called, (laughs) who uh, got rid of Congressman McCarthy. And uh, certainly Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan, uh, absolutely, it's a stunning thing. How does a political party sink to this level? And more than that, the Republicans have illusions, some might say, delusions of winning the election in 2024. What sane person would vote for a party that cannot put its own house in order? I, You know, I would hope that there would not uh, be that many, but I, you know, I, I watch from time to time uh, Jordan Klepper on Comedy Central, who is a wonderful comedian and satirist, and he makes a habit on a regular basis of going to these Trump gatherings and interviewing people. And, uh, and the, the things that they say to me are just, are just stunning. And I know that uh, you, you and I tend to, to move in, in, in circles that, per, you know, I'm here in Southern Oregon. You are in you are in San Francisco. I, I I love both of those places, but I I think there are a lot of places in the country where folks look at things with with a, a, a view that does not exactly hew to to logic uh, in, in a way that you and I would hope. No, I think you're right, but part of that has to do with the fact that the Republican Party has been infected with a virus yeah. that has become pervasive in its body politic. Look, I did not like particularly uh, Paul Ryan when he was Speaker of the House. Yeah. But the Republican Party would be well served if a Paul Ryan were Speaker of the House today. This is a, this is a tragedy for the two-party system in America. But stop and think about it. The world is teetering toward, we're not talking about the Middle East at this very moment, you and I, but every minute there is a breaking story. Every minute there is a potential for a real conflagration. And one would think that the Republican Party would put the country above its petty political pickings. But let me tell you, there's a problem. There's a fly in the ointment. Donald John Trump, whose only concern is with his own survival. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, Mr. Trump announced that if he were president, Hamas would never have attacked Israel. Oh, and by the not. way, he would solve the Ukrainian problem in a day. Uh, you know, the the it's just so ludicrous. And you think <laughs> about political figures in the past who have made outrageous statements, like like George Romney, mm-hmm. brainwashing in Vietnam. He was finished. But <laughs> unfortunately, there is something that has happened, and we may joke about it, we may giggle about it, but it's no laughing matter. Yeah. The idea that a major political party, the party of Lincoln, the party of Eisenhower and Nixon and Reagan, uh, and uh, yes, George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush, the fact that the Republican Party could go off the rails. I, I listened yesterday with fascination uh, to Liz Cheney, who has a new right. book coming. Out. I can't right. wait to read it, who said the greatest danger to America is Donald Trump. And, and she's right. But it's not just Trump the person. It's what Trump has done to the rational thinking of the American people. So this is, we we could go on and on about it, but the Republicans in the House had better straighten up 
or they're going to do great damage to the Republican and to the nation. You, you mentioned George Romney, and uh, I want to mention that in addition to Liz Cheney, his son, uh, Mitt Romney, has uh, has a book coming out as as well. And it seems like... It's not, it's not his book. It's not his book. It's a book by an author. Correct. To whom uh, Mitt has confided, and I can't tell you, I can't wait to read the book. Evidently, it is a blockbuster. The, the Confessions of, of Mitt Romney, it may as well be called. But you, I stand corrected. Uh, it is It is not by him. But it contains comprehensive uh, confessions, if you will, of Mitt Romney and his thoughts about the state of the current Republican Party. And it seems like if you look at Mitt Romney and Ryan, Paul Ryan and Liz Cheney, while you and I uh, would certainly disagree with many of the things that they have to say and many of their political positions, you can say that at least they are true to their country, at least they have opposed Donald Trump and, and the, the political madness he has brought on, and yet they have been castigated from the 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 party and and have been essentially forced out of politics and there are so few members of the Republican uh, Party uh, that 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 stand both in the party and for sanity I I will say this with a caveat because I have business dealings with him uh, Michael Steele former lieutenant governor of of Maryland uh, he is is a stalwart and former, and a tr- chair, and former chair of the Republican Party and rep- former RNC chairman and he is a stalwart he re- he though many have called on him to become a Democrat he says he's gonna uh, be be there to the keep to keep the lights on and he he gives me a little bit of hope uh, as does uh, uh, Larry Hogan he's he's a real cons- I am not a conservative but he is a real honest to God conservative and it, it seems like there are fewer and fewer people like that who are able to, from within the party itself, say, this cannot continue. This has gone too far. I, yeah, is there hope for for reconstructing that from within? Must it be reconstructed from from without? To, to uh, And I hesitate to use the analogy like a, a, a Germany or a Japan post-World War II. Look, to be blunt with you, this is a 1940 crisis for the Republican Party. The Republican Party in 1940 had the choice of going with isolationism or interventionism. And the Republican Party met in solemn convention in Philadelphia right after the fall of France. And they had a choice. They could have taken Bob Taft, who was an isolationist, or Tom Dewey, who was sort of wishy-washy on everything, uh, or Arthur Vandenberg, who was an isolationist at the time. But they went with Wendell Wilkie. And it caused a change in the way America thought. I am looking for a Republican who can stand up with the same brilliance and independence as a Wendell Wilkie, and who Wilkie literally, figuratively, dragged the Republican Party out of the dark images of isolationism into the bright sunshine of interventionism. Had there not been a Wilkie, there would have been a disaster because Wilkie supported Lend-Lease, he supported helping Britain, he supported opposing Hitler. But can you explain to me, can anybody explain how these bright, intelligent people in the Republican Party, even if they are ideologically conservative, how they can make the kind of statements they make, including, I must tell you, radio talk show hosts and television hosts Mm -hmm. who represent the right. I listen to some of them who say that, that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, is cognitively impaired, that he can't put two sentences together. Have they not listened to Joe Biden? You want to have, have they not listened to Donald Trump for that matter? <laughs> Heaven forbid. But this is the this is the partisan nature. I know you had a question. I wanted to answer it about what's happening in one particular state dealing with a question. Yes. Whether, yes. Let's hear it. This is Colorado, and a number. Uh, they're trying to. There is an effort, a lawsuit, being put forward to remove Donald Trump from the ballot for 2024 on the basis that uh, of the 14th Amendment that says, and I quote, uh, uh, or I don't quote exactly, I'm quoting a story from CNN, uh, U.S. officials who take an oath to uphold the Constitution are disqualified from future office if they engage in insurrection or have given aid or comfort to the insurrectionists. And certainly Donald Trump, based on his actions uh, in, on and around January 6th would certainly seem to conform to that standard. And yet uh, the lawsuit has not been knocked out. It's received several challenges, and it seems 